Hi, my name is Puyan, and today I'll be talking about Clang Interface Stubs. It's a new feature in Clang for doing code-directed generation of interface libraries. When a library is built, there are sections generated like .text and .data that are needed at runtime, but not for linking. In the context of this talk, a stub format is one that only includes sections that are needed for completing a link. In other words, Clang Interface Stubs is like Microsoft import libraries for ELF. Our motivation in building Clang Interface Stubs was to address the problem of building SDKs that expose explicitly anointed APIs by generating one of these stub files. We wanted source code to be the source of truth, and we wanted to give developers fine-grained control over API exposure as well as their internal SPIs. For these reasons, we repurposed the visibility attribute to enable developers to produce stub files containing only symbols marked for export. Prior art in this space include Microsoft's import libraries where DeckelSpec DLL import and DLL export are used to note what, get, to note what gets exposed, as well as Apple's text-based API, where API headers are scanned to produce a text format that the Darwin linker is able to link against. Clang Interface Stubs is inspired by these ideas. Visibility attributes are used to enforce explicit control over exported interfaces. This provides developers with fine-grained control over API exposure. It uses an intermediate text format to generate and merge symbols across compilation units. It brings these concepts to ELF without requiring changes to the linker because the ELF specification only requires the ELF header and ELF linking only requires the ELF symbol table. This approach has benefits outside of just stricter API control, including smaller SDK distribution and enhanced linker performance, since the linker will be reading in a smaller .so file when linking against the stub library. Traditionally, the Clang driver generates a pipeline of phase jobs that the Clang toolchain specifies. Regardless of the toolchain implementation, these phases follow the skeleton sequence of pre-processing, compilation, backend code generation, assembly, and finally linking. There are many flags that can be used to trim the full length of this pipeline, but this structure is essentially what the Clang driver follows. Since Clang interface stubs doesn't need to actually generate code or invoke a linker, the traditional pipeline structure is unnecessary. Because of this, I've added support for arbitrary phase pipelines so the Clang driver can invoke only the jobs needed for generating and merging collections of exposed symbols for every compilation unit. During the compile phase, an ASD consumer walks the decals for a given source file to generate text. This text format is a triple followed by a listing of mangled symbols. When these intermediate text files are passed on to the pipeline merge phase, the driver invokes a tool named LLVM IFS that merges the per compilation unit text files into a merged text file. After merging, LLVM IFS uses the merged representation to generate a linkable library file. To be clear, this merging of the symbol lists is different from linking as it does not involve things like handling relocations. To use Clang interface stubs, pass the emit interface stubs flag to Clang. If you specify multiple source files, the results will be merged. By default, an ELF shared object will be generated. Refactoring of the Clang driver's pipeline setup code in places like driver build actions and get compilation phases were amongst the challenges encountered. Brittle corner cases were found as part of this refactoring. There is also a good deal of complexity in the handling of templates, template specializations, and nested decals in ASD consumer. Finally, there is a fair amount of iteration on the text format that helped to make it more readable. Some items of future work include the hardening of the AST scanning and symbol merging components of Clang interface stubs. I also think a good future application would be to use interface stubs to track ABI changes across different variation, different versions of libc++. Currently, this work only supports C and C++ code bases, though with the LVM integrated assembler, it should be possible to support assembly sources as well. Finally, there is room for expanding support to other stub formats like Microsoft import libraries, Darwin's Tappy format, and the more recent ELF Tappy format. Clang Interface Stubs is in the upstream tree, and I'd love to hear feedback. Thank you.